Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new. Today's tutorial is going over this soft matte bridal makeup look. The first precaution I always take is clipping back my client's hair. I never want to disrupt the hairstyle that they already have, so I use no dent hair clips. The first part of the makeup application is always your skincare prep. I'm taking the Fresh Rose Deep Hydration Toner. This is a rose water based toner and the rose inside of it does calm down any irritation inside the skin. And I like using toners because it removes any excess oils and just preps the skin really nicely. I also use it on a cotton pad just so it's nice and gentle on the skin. Next, I'm going in with the Sonia Roselli Water Elixir. The best way I can describe this is that it's a very fluid kind of consistency and it resembles more of an essence. I like using it on the clients that are a little bit more dry just because of the fact that it adds a lot of hydration to the skin. The next product that I'm taking is another Sonia Roselli product and that is the Water Balm. This is a moisturizer with priming properties so you do not have to go in with a separate primer which I really like. I love products that are a two-in-one just so you can skip a little bit of steps in case you're in a time crunch. I'm just making sure that I'm covering all areas of the face especially around the nose area just so that part isn't skipped. Next I'm going in with the Anastasia Brow Powder Duo in the shade Soft Brown and I'm taking a angled liner brush here and just going right in with that powder. She naturally had a really good amount of brow hair so I didn't have to fill it in that much. I just more so was focusing on the areas that were a little bit more sparse so I started in the front of her brows. As you can tell I'm using the brush to mimic the hair stroke so I'm brushing up at the front of the brow and then pulling back where the tail is. For me as an artist I like making the most natural brow as possible but of course everybody is different with this. The next step I'm doing is priming the eyelids. I'm taking the P. Louise base in the shade 0.5 and I'm combining it with 0.4. I just don't have any colors in between right now, otherwise it would probably be around 0.3. I am just taking this to carve up underneath the eyebrows to kind of create a shape. This is a little bit of a thicker consistency. As you can tell, it's more of a cream product. It conceals any discoloration on the eyelids, as well as also creating a sticky base for your eyeshadows to stick on top of, which in turn makes them a lot more pigmented. I am using a flat concealer brush to do this. I think a lot of people make the mistake of slapping on a ton of product when using this, but you really want to go pretty light-handed. Just put enough to cover the eyelids. Then I'm just taking a completely clean fluffy brush and just removing any of the excess product. This just ensures that there is no excess product sitting there and can settle under the creases. I'm taking that same fluffy blending brush and taking the Saint Cosmetics eyeshadow in the shade Cafe, which is a lighter tone mauve shade, I would say, and I'm just using that on the outer thirds of her eye, just making sure that I'm blending very well. Whenever you do a matte eyeshadow look like this, you always want to make sure that you are focusing on your blending. With shimmer eyeshadows, it's really easy to use that to cover up any mistakes with blending, but with mattes, it's always really easy to see any of your mistakes or any patches that haven't been blended out, so just make sure that you are kind of going back and forth with this. I'm going in with the MAC eyeshadow in the shade Cork next. This just gave it a little bit more of a warm tone. I wanted to do a cooler mauve tone theme with this eyeshadow look, but I also do like warmth in the crease. It was a little bit too cool tone for her complexion, so I did admit that I needed to add warmth back into it. Next, I'm taking the Saint Cosmetics eyeshadow in the shade Lullaby, and this is a deeper mauve tone than the shade Cafe. They are literally the exact same tone, just one is lighter than the other one, and I'm just using that to deepen up the crease a little bit with a more more concentrated pointed brush. Next, I'm just taking a white eyeshadow out of one of my Morphe palettes. You can take any white that you'd like, just as long as it shows up and is pigmented. Even if you're doing a matte eyeshadow look, it's essential still to set the center of the lid or wherever you don't have eyeshadow there. This not only sets the primer in place, but it also helps the eyeshadows blend together a little bit better. Instead of using an actual eyeliner for this, I decided to do a softer liner effect with eyeshadow. So I took my matte charcoal brown eyeshadow on an angled liner brush and I'm just smudging this along her lash line. She did already have lash extensions as well, so it made my job very easy. I didn't have to put on lashes or mascara on the top, so I just went on to foundation. For the foundation, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder Foundation in the shade 6 Medium. This is one of the commonly used shades in my kit, and I do like to mix these a lot. The Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder Foundation does have a more luminous finish. It's definitely a sheer to medium coverage foundation, more on the sheer side, especially when you use a sponge. I specifically picked this foundation for her because as you can tell this girl has hardly any flaws on her face. She did not have that big of pores or anything and there wasn't much to cover so I was just more so concentrated on evening out her skin tone as opposed to just adding coverage. As you can tell I'm using the same concealer brush as I used for the P. Louise base on her eyes. I prefer to work in sections when I'm applying foundation just to make sure that all areas of the face get covered. 
So I'm using the concealer brush to put foundation in areas of her face. Then I'm using my Dampen Disposable Beauty Sponge, which is the Beauty 360 brand that I get at CVS. I think they have changed names now to one and other, but they used to be 360. I do carry around a spray bottle full of water with me in case you guys were wondering. I always carry around one of those on site just so I have something to wet my sponges with just in case there isn't a sink nearby. The reason I like putting foundation on with a concealer brush is because you can get to areas that are really hard to reach with a foundation brush sometimes, such as areas right now around the nose. The second reason I like using this method is because you can control the amount of product or the amount of coverage that you have. You can use a little amount of product first, blend it out, and then if you don't have enough coverage, you can layer it and go back in. This also prevents the makeup from getting too heavy and too cakey. I've always found that by using a foundation brush, I just lay on the product way too heavy and it does not look right at all. Next, I'm just taking a concealer up underneath her eyes. I'm going in with the Too Faced Multi-Use Concealer in the shade Porcelain. I'm taking that same concealer brush after wiping it off on a tissue just to make sure it's clean of the foundation. I always use the upside down triangle method for the concealer. I know this is a very old school thing, but it's worked for me for a very long time. I also usually match the skin tone of the client exactly. I have gone one to two shades lighter with concealer before, but I felt like with people that have really dark circles, it just doesn't cover. So I wanna match as closely to the foundation as I possibly can. I zoomed up really closely because I wanted you guys to see how lightly I'm actually pressing into the client's skin. This is the time where you might see your client's eyes start to water a little bit. And if you ever see tears start forming up in their eyes, make sure you're really aware of that and make sure you pull back as soon as you possibly can. Give them time to blink for a little bit and then you can always go back in. Some clients are a lot more sensitive than others, so you just really wanna be aware of this. Then next I'm taking the concealer right down the center of the face. So I'm going on the forehead, down the bridge of the nose, on the sides of the nose, on the cupid's bow, and also on the chin. Then I'm just using that sponge again just to blend everything out. Next, I'm going in with the Huda Beauty Loose Powder in the shade Pound Cake. I'm using the powder to set all the areas that I just put concealer, especially underneath the eyes and then right down the center of the face where people usually tend to get more oily. I really don't feel a need to set the entire face. Oils don't usually come from the outside of the face and I wanna maintain a healthy looking glow. I also feel like bronzer and blush set the outside of the face just as much as loose powder does. This is where I realized that my camera stopped recording, so let me catch you up. I used the Patrick Ta Sculpting Duo, the cream side in the shade she sculpted, and then I went went in with the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blush in the shade Believe, and that is what I'm using right now on her cheeks. I just used a bullet brush from Morphe, just used it on the cheekbones, blended it out with a sponge, and then now I'm going in with the Huda Beauty Glowish Bronzer in the shade Medium, and just using that to set the cream bronzer that I put underneath. I'm going underneath her cheekbones to sculpt out her face a little bit more. Then I'm also going around the perimeters of her face and then right on the sides of the nose just to give almost like a more contoured look to the nose. Next, I'm taking the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Soft and Gentle. Literally one of my OG favorites. I will never not have this in my kit. It's such a staple. I'm taking this with a highlighter brush. This looks like the Anastasia one, but I actually found a dupe of it off of Amazon and I am so in love with it. So I bought like six of them. <laughs> and I am using this to go on top of the cheekbones just to kind of create a natural light source on her face. I'm going right on the high points of her face, so such as the temples, on the bridge of her nose, on the cupid's bow, and then also on the chin as well. Just kind of almost mimicking where the sun would naturally hit somebody. Then I'm going in with the Saint Eyeshadow in the shade Lullaby again. This was the darker mauve tone shade, and I'm taking a more dense um, brush underneath her eyes. If you notice, her eyes kind of started to water a little bit, and that is completely normal. Just make sure there's no excess water that's pooling up, otherwise you might have to give your client's eyes a break for a little bit. It also may look like I'm being a little bit aggressive with this, but I'm really not pushing that hard. Next, I always work with waterproof mascara because dealing with brides, you just never know. So I use the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara, and of course it is waterproof as I mentioned. I like using little brow spoolies for the lower lashes because I feel like they're a lot more precise than the regular size mascara ones, so I like using those. Next, I'm going in with the Gerard Cosmetics Lip Liner in the shade Ecstasy. Now, you have to be careful with this pencil on certain complexions because on her, for instance, it started to turn a little bit more purple. This was not my original intention. I wanted to turn it more of a neutral mauve sort of color. So instead, I paired it with a warm tone lipstick combo. I took the shade Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury and then I combined it with MAC Act Natural, which is more of a neutral tone brown shade. And then it made a more neutralized color here, as you can tell. I do want to note that I probably should have gone in with a lip balm first because her lips were a little bit more dry, which I should have noticed as an artist. I do like to point out my mistakes if I do make them. I kind of made up for it by going in with a clear lip gloss afterwards, but in retrospect, I definitely should have used the lip balm first. 
Now here's me going in with the lip gloss. I go in with the Lancome Juicy Tubes lip gloss in clear. I feel like you don't need to carry every single lip gloss underneath the sun. You can just carry a clear, mix it with some lipstick, and then you have a tinted lip gloss. Then I'm just locking everything in with the Scandinavia Bridal Makeup Setting Spray, and that is it for this tutorial. I hope you guys really enjoyed this look. If you guys did, definitely go ahead and give me a big thumbs up on the video, as well as subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!